story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Ebunlomo Adekunle in our major story. Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka, Speaker, House of Representatives Aminu Tambuwal, APC National Chairman John Odige Oyegu, regrets Kaede Faimi's loss at the 2014 Ekiti governorship election. Also in this program, former Kwara State Governor Bukola Saraki pulled out of APC presidential race citing national interest. Labour Party stalwart in Lagos size on the state governor Rushevo Mimiko was a PDP mole in the party. And outside Nigeria, top United States health official blames mistake for Ebola spread. We open this bulletin on a rather sad note. Fire broke out at one of the female hostels in the University of Lagos at the early hours of Sunday. The fire, which started about 3 a.m., consumed valuables of the four occupants of the room in Madame Tinubu Hall of Residence, though without any casualty. The school authorities, through one of its spokespersons, however, refused to grant interviews before camera. Omata Yalo brought back this report. This is what remains of the four-man room in the Madame Tinubu Hall of Residence, University of Lagos. The cause of the fire, which is still very easy, left the belongings of the students in ruins. The media relations officer, King Robert Emukwore, who refused to speak on camera, says negligence on the part of the affected students led to the fire outbreak. Cooking in the room, according to him, is prohibited by the school authorities, an accusation denied by the affected students. The other that it was impossible for them to be cooking at 3 a.m. in the morning. According to them, they woke up to realize that the room was on fire and all they could do was to run for their lives while still unsure of the cause of the inferno. Information guarded also revealed that the Lagos State Fire Service stationed in Alausa area, Ikeja, later showed up to put out the fire and stopped it from causing further damage. Our visit to the fire station did not yield fruit as those on ground also declined comments. On Motayo Alo, Call TV News, Lagos. That's indeed a sad one. Nobel laureate Wale Shoink has described the loss of the outgoing governor of Ikita State, Kaede Faimi, in the June 21 governorship election as a mystery which the All Progressives Congress must unravel. He said, with the various programs and legacy projects put in place by him, his successor must continue on the path of development. He stated this during the inauguration of the new government house known as Ayoba Villa in Adwekiti on Sunday. The seat of government in Ekiti State is not honorable, brave, intelligent, and committed people. Like, for instance, Adekunle Baju. My hope, my confidence, is that it will yet again know, after the departure of Kari, will yet again know honorable, intelligent, committed, and humanistic rulers. Don't despair. Don't give us hope. 
In his remarks, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambuel, said posterity would be a better judge that finally ruled a Kitty state in dignified ways to the extent that it left indelible marks in the state. Tambuel added that Fire may combine my brother, two governments my friend, and politics. He is an honorable man that speaks volumes. On his part, the APC National Chairman John Odigio Yegu reassured that the party will continue to galvanize and mobilize to reclaim the state between and APC the and PDP. Governor Fayemi is one of the examples that we keep citing. The difference is so clear. The difference is there. But, well, uh, we will just wait. It's not over yet, too, let me tell you. It's not over until it is truly over. And I want to also tell you that. Uh, your governor, the governor of a Kitty state, has one of the brightest prospects in this nation today. The Senate Committee on Ecology and Environment, the chairman rather, Bukola Saraki, has shelved his presidential ambition ahead next year's general elections. Saraki, in a statement, says, he decided to step down his ambition because Nigeria's political outlook for 2015 is very complicated. And this is the time for every patriotic politician to situate his personal ambition in the context of the country's overall interests. Saraki's presidential bid has packed widespread excitement among his supporters in the past few months, with various interest groups urging him to contest. The former governor of Kwara State noted that party primaries in any healthy democracy would always leave several contenders disappointed and sometimes bitter, as there would be only one winner. The statement added that Saraki has had the opportunity to discuss and exchange thoughts and ideas with other presidential aspirants on the platform of the APC. The North Central Zonal Coordinator of Jonathan Actualization Movement, Mike Omotosho, says the people of the region have no reason not to vote massively for President Gulag Jonathan in 2015. Omotosha says the achievements of Jonathan in the region are so remarkable that the people of the North Central should consider him their president forever. He noted that the country was lucky to have the president leading at this critical period of national development and urged all Nigerians to make President Jonathan their choice again in 2015. He also listed the Abuja Centenary City Project, Abuja Multi-Million Naira Water Treatment Plant, and renovation of the military barracks, among others, as some of the reasons why the FCT must vote for the president in 2015. Omotosha said, for the people of Kugi State, the establishment of Federal University Felele Lokoja, the dualization of the 212 kilometers Lokoja Abuja Road, Lokoja Okene Bini Road and the Gerugu Power Generating Plant, among others. The Minister of Information, Labaran Marku, on Sunday confirmed that he would quit the Federal Executive Council on October 20. He said his decision to cease to be a minister is to allow him to pursue his ambition of becoming the governor of Nasarawa State in 2015. He spoke during a Thanksgiving service he organized at St. Patrick's Catholic Parish, Akwanga. Court even has learned that six ministers may quit President Goodluck Jonathan's cabinet in October as preparations for the 2015 general elections peak. Mark was recently reported among ministers who expected to resign their appointments in order to pursue their governorship ambitions on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Confirming the report, Marco said by October 20, all members of the FEC who are interested in pursuing their ambitions would step down. He said he had made up his mind to sacrifice the comfort of the office he currently holds in order to join his people in the wilderness. A member of the House of Representatives, Okwayemi Bamidele, says the Labour Party would survive the defection of Ondo State Governor Olusegun Mimiko. The Labour Party candidate in the June 21st Ekiti governorship election said the successful conduct of the party's national convention on Saturday was a signal to this.
The federal lawmaker in a statement in Adwekiti on Sunday by his media aide, Ahmed Salami, said the Labour Party was strong enough to withstand challenges. Mimiko, who recently defected to the PDP, has been attracting condemnation from some Labour Party members for his action. Meanwhile, the crisis rocking the Labour Party following the defection of some key chieftains among them, the Indo State Governor Olushegu Mimiko, is still generating reactions. The General Secretary of the Lagos Chapter of the Party, Femi Onofe, has described the party as bigger than any individual, no matter his political achievements. He lashed out Mimiko and the outgoing chairman of the party, Dan Uwayao, for leveraging on the Labour Party for personal political gains. Mimiko was in the Labour Party to do the bidding of the PDP. His business in the Labour Party was to stem the growth of the party, was to frustrate the organic growth and prosperity and the flourishing of the party because he knows what the Labour Party represents. And as far as he's concerned, an organically developed Labour Party will be a problem to the ruling class in this country. And so he was sent as an agent. And unfortunately, our national chairman, outgoing national chairman, was not discerning enough to understand that the Labour Party was not founded for the aggrandizement of anybody, but was founded for the reason of principles, guiding principles which informed the establishment of the party by the thinkers who came together to see the need to give the ordinary people of this country an opportunity to express themselves politically, to give room for the ordinary man who may not have a millionaire in the bank to be able to contest office. But again, we, like I say, every vehicle that proceeds on the journey can suffer a mishap. And the Labour Party in the past 10 years has suffered mishap. And the party is just about to regain its original self, its original identity, and flourish in the pursuit of the objective for which it was created. It's the Core TV Primetime News. We go on a break now and when we return. The whereabouts of former NBA president Okewali kidnapped over the weekend remains unknown. Join us after this break for details. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos brings a dog as all to you on Be the, the first to know Core TV news. from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we news. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV. A 24 hour news station. Many thanks to you for being there. Here is a quick reminder of some other major stories. Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka, Speaker, House of Representatives Aminu Tambua, APC National Chairman Jem Odige Oyego regrets Kai Definy's loss at the 2014 Ekiti governorship election.
Former Kwara State Governor Bukola Saraki pulls out of the APC presidential race, citing national interest. Labour Party stalwart in Lagos size, Ondo State Governor Olusegu Mimiko was a PDP mole in the party. Now you can also reach us on our social media platform. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash core TV news. On Twitter at core TV news ng. YouTube.com forward slash core TV leave a space then news. Judiciary workers nationwide under the ages of the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria have accused the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Adoke, of being selective in implementing court judgments. They noted that Adoke was quick to demand the immediate implementation of the recent judgment on the governorship position of Adamawa State on September, but failed to do same for the ruling of the same court which granted financial autonomy to the judiciary since January 13, 2014. Incidentally, both judgments were delivered by Justice Adini Yadimola of a federal high court in Abuja. President of Justin, Marwan Adamu, said in a statement in reaction to the letter written by Adoke directing immediate swearing-in of the former deputy governor of Adamawa State, Bala Ingilari, as the substantive governor in line with the judgment. Adamo, who commended Adoke for taking such step at ensuring the enforcement of the court judgment in Adamawa case, stated that the Minister of Justice, as the nation's chief law officer, seemed to have woken up to his constitutional duties. The Justin leader therefore urged Adoke to immediately replicate the same gesture in ensuring that the judgment on the financial autonomy status of the judiciary was immediately implemented. The Nigerian Bar Association has pleaded for the release of its immediate past president, Uke Wali, who was said to have been abducted in Port Harcourt on Saturday. In a statement by the president of the NBA, Augustine Alege, on Sunday, the association also called on the federal government to be committed to its constitutional responsibility of protecting the lives of Nigerians. The statement described Wally as a man of peace who has not only contributed immensely to the enthronement of the rule of law and protection of human rights, but also to the development of our nation. The NBA calls on the federal government to step up efforts to fulfill its primary constitutional role of providing for the welfare and security of all Nigerians. Gunmen suspected to be sea pirates on Saturday attacked a passenger speedboat near Kiberi Bayou along the Ogbianembe Brass Waterpar, Waterway rather, in Bayosa State and took away four passengers, two women and two children. In addition, the hoodlums carted away valuable items worth thousands of naira, including the attack boat. The incident occurred barely 48 hours after the state chapter of the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria suspended its strike over insecurity on the state's waterways. The state's government had prevailed on the union's leadership to suspend the strike, describing it as ill-advised because of the numerous ongoing developmental and political activities which require marine transportation. It was learned that the boat was traveling from Obia to Okwama in Brass local government area when the gun wielding hoodlum struck at about 3 p.m. on Saturday. The bandits were said to have also made away with a speedboat after forcing the driver and the passengers on board to disembark into the mangrove reef forest. When contacted, public relations officer by Yelsa Police Command Alex Akhibi said he was not yet aware of the incident. Foreign ministers of Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, Benin Republic and Niger will meet in Abuja on Monday to agree on appropriate legal framework for cross-border military operations against Boko Haram insurgency in the region. A statement issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on Sunday said the one-day meeting would be attended by the defense ministers of the five neighboring countries.
It said the meeting would agree on the adoption of a draft resolution by the AU and the UN Security Council for the establishment of appropriate legal framework for military operations to fight Boko Haram. The meeting, which is being held under the auspices of Lake Chad Basin Commission and Benin Republic, is a follow-up to the extraordinary summit held on October 7 in Niamey, Niger. The summit, which was attended by President Goodluck Jonathan and three heads of state, had announced plans to deploy coordinated military forces to fight Boko Haram terrorists. The leaders agreed to deploy an additional battalion and a command center to tackle the terrorists. The terrorist group had claimed responsibility for the kidnap of no fewer than 200 schoolgirls in Chibok, Brno State, since April. The Bring Back Our Girls group has begun a week-long action to remind the world that the Chippo girls have not been rescued almost six months after their abduction. With so much emotion and banners bearing different inscriptions, the group says it will continue to sit out no matter how long it takes. Pear Samuel has more. It's almost six months since the abduction of over 200 schoolgirls. And since this group of Nigerians began their daily sit-outs, they are not prepared to stop until the girls are rescued. They are not happy with the lack of information on efforts to reunite the girls with their families. One after the other, they reeled out the names of Thank some of the abducted much. girls. Hajirai Issa is the youngest, I think, in this group. She's aged 15. Wazu Haman, Hawa Ntakai, Hawa Muta, Comfort Bolus. They are not also convinced that government is doing enough to rescue the girls. I will only believe that there are successes when the media is taken to those towns they claim they have, uh, they, they claim they have taken back from the insurgents. I do not believe in the spin that has been all over the media because the, 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 they say one thing and then contradict themselves the very next day. If those towns have been taken, take the media there. Take the media to, to Madagali, take the media to Baza, take the media to wherever you say you have retaken. Otherwise, I do not believe. Only recently, the military says it has recorded successes in the fight against insurgency. But this woman says, in spite of the efforts, more needs to be done. It's not a conventional warfare. It's hard to say what the military is doing. I believe there are people on the ground but, uh, that are fighting and that they're making efforts. I hear uh, various stories. Um, but not directly from the military and also not, uh, that not, not stories that are open to the public. So it's very hard to actually ascertain what is going on. And you can actually understand uh, some of that to an extent that they don't want to reveal all their tactics. But um, when you sit here with the parents and the relish, uh, you know, relations and you see in other countries when mishaps happen, um, there's a briefing, there's an updating, maybe not you know, uh, broadcast, but at least to the people who are waiting for their loved ones. It's hard to say what's happening, really, you know. So I can't say they're doing enough. I can't say they're not doing enough. But I, I think the military is, tr is, um, is doing what they can do. But we just don't know what the details of that is. Members of the group also held a candlelight vigil for the girls. Soli, 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 The leader of the group is concerned over the rescue mission. She also wants President Jonathan to mobilize the citizenry against the nation's common enemy. Do you think government is doing enough or has done enough in this, within this period to bring these girls back? I don't think so. I don't think so. They, um, they you know, there's a way that something is done and it persuades you there's a certain level of credibility and diligence in pursuit of an objective that comes true unfortunately it hasn't in this particular case 
I think mobilizing the citizens. This, unfortunately, has been the most divisive time that I have ever seen of Nigeria. How can we be divided in a time of a scourge like terrorism? And a lot of the capacity to mobilize resides in the president. But it's the know. president that must mobilize okay, ma the entire citizenry. And as the world marks this year's International Day of the Girl Child, the Bring Back Our Girls group says all hope is not lost for the abducted girls. They only want governments to end their long expectation of seeing the girls rescued alive. Pyro Samuel, Court TV News, Abuja. The mess that has become the lot of most Nigerian roads has for some time now registered its presence on the roads leading to the popular Riverview estate is sure enough in Ifo local government area of Ogun State. The deplorable condition of the road has left the residents and businesses in the community regretting the reinvestments in the area. Core TV News crew met with some residents of the community who shared their daily experiences through L in this report. The rise in population in Nigeria has resulted in pressure for the provision of basic social amenities. Naturally, it is expected of the government to provide such needs like housing, roads, among others, for the people. In this part of the world, housing is majorly a private affair, and in the case of the residents of Isheri North, if a local government area of Ogun State, housing has been solely a private affair. But government seem to be lagging in other infrastructural duties. This looks beautiful, the Riverview Estate. But the roads passing through this multi-million naira estate and others in the vicinity is better imagined than experienced. Although the roads from the estate leading all the way to the Ishari market was started during the Gwinga Daniel administration, the whole area, according to residents, has not experienced government presence since change in governance, as several efforts, according to them, to reach relevant authorities have proven abortive. The claim that the community service put in place to address the issue, although expensive, has brought little results. Oh, well, I'm one of the pioneer uh, residents of this place. So we start, this estate started 2006. So it's here, here, here. You can see the cars. It's as if you've gone to swim in a mud. Well, it's not just the road. Everything you've seen here is the effort of uh, the residents. Electricity, the road, even this year, we filled everything here. And they brought in uh, bulldozer, brought in grader, brought in uh, compressor, and, uh, but this is the issue. So we've written to government, uh, as we know, that um, Bengadana's regime started this place. So, and then when we observed the quality of work they were doing then, we were in 2007, we wrote him and they said, look, this place is going to be a mess because of the quality of job. And uh, since that time, they just abandoned us. And when the new government came, we've written them, they've not acknowledged our... But why will anybody acquire land in such a challenging environment as a sherry nurse? Abayo Miyakinde, who is the chairman, Landlord Association, was quick to defend the residents. There is nobody who, you know, will put his investment, his money, in a risky place. If we knew that there is a problem here, nobody would have uh, invested here. This estate was sold to us, the land here was sold to us by the government of Ugun State. All of us got our certificate of occupancy. So if anybody is to be blamed, if there is any problem, I think the problem lies squarely on the shoulder of the government of Ogun State. Because we didn't go out of our way to, you know, to buy land from these speculators or, or moneyless. We bought from the government. Government sold this land to us. We paid development levies to the government of Ogun State. They sold the land to us, gave us approved building plan without even advising the residents that, look, this is the specification you must raise your building to this particular height because there is a problem in this topography. They didn't do that. Any plan you submit to the, to the Ministry of Physical Planning, provided you pay them, they are going to approve. 
Yes, the development there. level varies from you know, house to house or from plot to plot, depending on the size of your plot. But the minimum development levy here is 1.2 million. There is an allegation that the government has distanced itself because it claims the area is water plagued, whereas the government has also proposed an estate just opposite the Riverview estate. Core TV News went on a trip to Abiokuta to get government's response after several calls and messages sent got no response from all quarters. Core TV News, however, gathered that both the Commissioner and Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Works, were not on seat. The roads have not only been abandoned, the ones leading to the sherry market have become workshops and parking lots for heavy-duty vehicles and 40 cars. Could this be a crisis of difference in the blueprints of different administrations? If the Amosu administration is not identifying with the former project, despite its promise to rebuild, does this also mean these residents have not been responsible to the government in their taxes? Uh, yes, like all this receipt that I have in my hand is the receipt that we used to pay trade permits and the local government uh, 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 trade fees uh, every year. Uh, and also the tax, Ogun State tax uh, revenues. Another election year is fast approaching. New campaigns, new promises. But the people of Isheri North are asking. We take another break now, and when we return, it is with business, sports, and other stories outside Nigeria. Don't go away. One continent, 54 countries, over 2,000 languages, but united in similar interests. As news breaks, we give you in-depth analysis around Africa every Monday on Core TV News. Glad to have you join us on another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. Until the end of our time, and the legitimate authority to govern this country. Give me 20 minutes to move, or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very comes. The PDP is the ruling party has failed. To anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of Oson State and cause havoc, is deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9:15 p.m. on 40 News. Thank you for being there. Now it's time for business news. Finding ways to tackle the challenges in the power sector, Techno Gas and Power will spend 1 billion naira in the next five years to manufacture prepaid meters. The managing director of Techno Gas and Power, Collins Onyama, made this statement in Lagos on Sunday, saying the partnership is with a Bulgarian company known as Incotex. Oyama estimated, estimated about 150 billion naira was needed yearly to provide up to 6.5 million prepaid meters every year for the next five years to meet the demands of Nigerian households needing prepaid meters. The prepaid plant will be locally built in Lagos to provide jobs for the populace. 50 people have been trained to handle the installation of the company's meters assuring that the number would be increased to 100 by the year end. The company has also made it possible to ensure that consumers use their meters within 48 days of purchase. The 48 days is in line with the credit advance payment for meter installation requirement. Uyama disclosed that his firm and Incotex have held exploratory talks with electricity distribution companies in Enugu, Ibado and Ikeja to ensure smooth business relationships. According to him, the inability for power holding company of Nigeria to provide enough meters was what gave birth to these and the meters produced are in accordance with European quality standard. The price of gold backed up 0.3% but silver fell. By poking its head above the downtrend line, gold closed 
at $1,221 for the week from $1,224 over the week. But the price of silver fell by 0.23% to close at $17.25. The silver had been dipping on a weekly chart but hopes to bounce up in coming week. Nigeria's interbank lending rate stayed flat for the second consecutive week at 10.37% on Friday after the central bank paid off open market bills to boost liquidity. The Central Bank of Nigeria repaid about 130 billion naira in matured OMO bills and injected around 70 billion naira in net credit from cash reserves. The market liquidity opened with a cash balance of around 550 billion naira surplus, marginally lower than 560 billion last Friday. The open buy back rate was flat at 10.25% this week, 1.75 basis points below the central bank's benchmark interest rate of 12%. And now to the world of sport. Nigeria's Super Eagles returned to the country on Sunday morning after the shock 0-1 loss to host Sudan in a crucial Nations Cup qualifier in Khartoum to a cold reception from Nigerians. An obviously disturbed head coach of the team, Steven Keshi, and team keeper, Vincent Ayama, later took off time to assess the situation and agreed that Despite the fact that all hopes were not lost in the battle for qualification, Nigerians deserve a better deal from the team. Kashi, who spoke first to a handful of sports journalists, said he was disappointed at the resort like every other Nigerian, as he had hoped to use the game to kickstart Nigeria's quest for a back-to-back -back Nations Cup trophy. Ayama spoke in a similar vein, appealing to Nigerians not to lose faith in the team. He said he has already spoken to his teammate and they have resolved that there will be no compromise in the battle for the nine points remaining in the next three games. Swiss master Roger Federer has won the first Shanghai Masters title with a straight set victory over girl Simon. The Swiss world number three let out a huge roar after unseeded Frenchman Simon hit a forehand into the net to give him a 7-6, 8-6, 7-6, victory. The former world number one says he was delighted to win he win what he described as the biggest tournament in Asia. He lost the 2010 final to Andy Murray. Federer, 33, says it was a dream week and admitted he got lucky in the course of the match, which he got underway by winning the opening set with his only backhand winner down the line. British driver Lewis Hamilton, who has dedicated his Russian Grand Prix victory to Jules Bianchi, who remains in a critical condition with severe head injuries. Hamilton, while reflecting on what he describes as a dream week, says he had been thinking of the Frenchman ever since his crash in the Japanese Grand Prix a week ago. Hamilton says he is dedicating his victory at the Russian Grand Prix in Sochi to him and his family, believe that it will make a difference. He hopes that gestures such as these will serve as a bit of positive energy which will help in a way. Prior to the commencement of the race, all the drivers gathered on the grid in tribute to Bianchi, whose car hit a recovery vehicle after he lost control in wet conditions at Suzuki despite waved yellow caution flags. And now to all the star results at Nigeria. A top U.S. health official says a mistake was clearly made by staff treating a man who died of Ebola in Texas, resulting in one being infected. The female health worker infected is in an isolation ward in stable condition, awaiting confirmation of a diagnosis. Tom Friden, head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, said a full inquiry would be made into how the transmission occurred. He said 48 other people who may also have had contact were being observed. The health worker at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital wore full protective gear while treating Ebola victim Thomas Eric Duncan, according to health officials in Dallas. 
Duncan, who caught the virus in his native Liberia country, died last Wednesday. The current Ebola outbreak concentrated in Liberia, Guinea and Sierra Leone has resulted in more than 8,300 people confirmed in suspected cases and at least 4,033 deaths. And just before we close the show tonight, here is a wrap-up of the stories that made our headlines. We told you that Nobel laureate Wale Shoyinka, Speaker, House of Representatives Aminu Tambuwa, APC National Chairman John Odigio Yego, regrets Kairi de Fayemi's loss at the 2014 Ekiti governorship election. We also brought you a report that former Kwara State Governor Bukola Saraki has pulled out of APC presidential race, citing national interest. And last but not the least, a Labour Party stalwart in Lagos size on the state governor, Ushago Mimiko, was a PDP mole in the party. That's been the show tonight. On behalf of our entire news crew, I am Ebulomo Adekunle wishing you a wonderful night rest.